a lot has happened in multiple myeloma, as you've heard throughout this day. Myeloma is a disease where an, an incredible amount of progress has been made. And before I come to the topic at hand, I just want to make two big points. Number one is that we have had huge changes from starting with what is the disease, how do we define multiple myeloma, to how do we risk stratify. So we have a completely new diagnostic criteria and we also have a completely new staging system or risk stratification system. We've also got a completely new response criteria and Dr. Shaji Kumar here on the stage was the first author of that. And we have numerous new drugs that have been approved for the treatment of this disease. So clearly, a huge amount of progress has been made in diagnosis, risk stratification, uh, response assessment, and therapy. The one other big change that we want to leave people with as a sense is that although we call it as multiple myeloma, as we, as Shaji and I have written in this most recent review article for Nature Reviews, it is really multiple myelomas a word that was first coined by Dr. Fonseca. We have at least six different diseases that we collectively call as multiple myeloma. We have the trisomies and then five of the recurrent 14Q32 translocations. As you can see from the slide, the disease aggressiveness varies depending on the type. And we are calling them as multiple myeloma because they're plasma cell malignancies, but they, each one is unique. Each one is as different from each other as CLL is from mantle cell lymphoma. To make things complicated, each one of these can acquire secondary abnormalities like deletion 17P, P53 mutations, gain of 1Q, or loss of 1P, and so on, to make things very, very complicated. So in the future, I think we may not be targeting just how do we improve the outcome of multiple myeloma, but rather how do we improve the outcome of 414 myeloma? Or even more specifically, how do we improve the treatment outcome of patients with 414 myeloma who also have a double hit with a deletion 17P? We've heard about a number of big advances. How do they apply to patients with newly diagnosed myeloma, specifically the talk given to me, which is transplant ineligible patients? Numerous randomized control trials have been done, and I will just bore you with just two, because these two are the fundamental trials that have changed outcome. The, the, one, the first one is the first trial, and the first trial is the trial that retired melphalan. The first trial looked at lenalidomide dexamethasone versus melphalan prednisone thalidomide, and showed that a well-tolerated doublet can beat a triplet in uh, progression-free survival, as you can see in the blue line above as well as overall survival. The question next was, can we improve for transplant ineligible patients using a triplet? And the triplet that has made the, the biggest advance is bortezomib lindex, or otherwise called VRD. In this SWOG trial, you can see that VRD was compared to RD, or lindex, and what we found was that you can get better progression-free survival by using the triplet and you can get better overall survival. The progression-free survival using a triplet was about four years long and with overall survival median of about six years. So significant benefit, and this has led the whole US to adopt VRD as the standard frontline therapy for transplant ineligible patients. The trial also showed that even older patients, patients over the age of 75, benefited from the VRD triplet compared to RD, with superior progression-free as well as overall survival. What is really most important is frailty, and very frail patients may not be able to tolerate the triplet, and for them, there might be an opportunity to use other regimens or even something called VRD light, where you reduce the doses of both bortezomib and lenalidomide and try and get them benefit. One trial that I saw, interestingly, at last ASH, which has really impressed upon me the question that comes from most patients. As you heard from Dr. Kumar, one of my interests was how to lower the dose of steroids. When I started my career, dexamethasone was given 40 milligrams a day, 1 through 4, 9 through 12, 17 through 20. And the trial we did where we showed that once weekly dexamethasone is not only safer, but actually prolongs survival, was suggested by a patient, Michael Katz, from New York. 
And Michael Katz told me that, why are you guys just studying novel drugs? You need to show us whether we need this much steroids in an era of novel therapy. So that's why we did that study. And so the credit goes to Michael Katz. And the, the next question here is, once patients finish about nine months of VRD or whatever induction, do they need long-term Lendex as it was done in the SWOG trial, or can we retire the steroids? And this Italian study basically compared RD versus lenalidomide alone. And what they found was lenalidomide alone was actually better than RD. As a result, my initial algorithm for multiple myeloma looks like this for transplant ineligible patient. The preferred route is to give VRD for nine months, and after that, just lenalidomide alone as a single agent until progression. This is basically the SWOG trial, with the only amendment being that instead of RD, I'm just using lenalidomide alone, and that's extrapolation from, this, from the Italian data. There are some frail patients for whom you might not be able to give a triplet, either because they just simply cannot travel to the clinic every week to get bortezomib, or they are just too frail to withstand a triplet. And for them, RD alone until progression might be reasonable, or RD for one year followed by lenalidomide alone until progression. We are never satisfied because even this regimen of VRD gives you only a progression-free survival of four years and only an overall survival of median of about six years. That's not good enough. We need better. And so the question is, how can we improve on VRD? We, one approach is we can change the proteasome inhibitor. We can use carfilzomib or ixazomib instead and try and improve on VRD. And another, another approach would be to find a better partner for lenalidomide dexamethasone. Can we use a monoclonal antibody? Can we use daratumumab or elotuzumab instead? And of course, the, the, the other question would be, keep the VRD or the, the triplet intact and just add another drug and make it a four-drug regimen. So these, these, these are the most important questions floating around. And the best way to answer these questions is to have good randomized trials that address the question. Can you improve on VRD by using a better proteasome inhibitor? Can you improve on VRD by using daratumumab instead? And can you improve on VRD by adding another drug? The most mature data comes from the Maya trial. The Maya trial used DRD or daratumumab lendex instead of VRD and compared it to RD. And what it found was that you can improve progression-free survival significantly. A really important finding in this trial was that if you look at the progression-free survival duration, at the median duration of four years, which is what you get with VRD, 80% of patients getting DARA-RD are still progression-free. So it clearly looks like it's way better than VRD in terms of progression-free survival. However, the caveat is that in, with DARA-RD, you're not using a triplet for nine months followed by lenalidomide alone. You're actually using a triplet the whole way through, which means four, five, six years of a triplet, and that adds to toxicity, cost, and who knows what the long-term consequences would be. So I'm not yet willing to say that you can just switch to DARA-RD as your standard frontline, but I think there are both VRD and DARA-RD are reasonable options, and one has to really take into account the pros and cons and the patient in front of you in making that decision. We have written a lot about the disadvantages of the, of the Maya trial in this paper here in Nature Reviews, which you can look up uh, on PubMed. What about adding a fourth drug, just basically going with a quadruplet regimen? And you heard some discussion before. Cassiopeia and Griffin were done in transplant eligible patients. And in transplant eligible patients for the high risk <coughs> transplant eligible, maybe it is okay to consider a quadruplet even now. However, for transplant ineligible patients, we don't have that much data. The only data we have is from the Alcione trial, which used VMP, and VMP is not a regimen we use commonly in the United States. And you can see the control arm with VMP did quite badly compared to what you would get with uh, VRD. What about carfilzomib, changing from bortezomib into carfilzomib? And here again, in elderly patients, you have to be really careful. The Clarion trial compared KMP to VMP. Really, the head-to-head -head question was, was carfilzomib better than bortezomib? And the answer is no. In fact, there was no difference found. There were slightly more deaths in the carfilzomib arm, 
With all the concerns about cardiac failure and other things, I am very <coughs> hesitant to recommend carfilzomib-based regimens to elderly transplant ineligible patients. In the US, even more so, because for us, we actually consider patients to be transplant eligible even when they are 70 or 72. So when you are considering a patient who has transplant ineligible, they are certainly not the right candidates for carfilzomib at this point, unless we have data uh, from a randomized controlled trial. Such a trial has been done, and thanks to all of you, we have been able to accrue more than 1,100 patients to this trial that compares KRD to VRD head-to-head -head in all patients with newly diagnosed myeloma standard risk. Dr. Shaji Kumar here was the PI of the study. We are waiting any day to find out the results of this trial. Once these results come out, we will find out if KRD is really indeed superior to VRD. Similarly, we have data uh, coming awaited on ixazomib, and until that comes in, it's really hard to recommend this. The larger question, though, is what metrics do we follow as these series of trials come about? If you see the various trials that are being completed or that are in progress, you will notice the same pattern. There is no head-to-head -head comparison of VRD versus DRD or VRD versus ERD. All of the trials, except for Doc, uh, Dr. Shaji Kumar's E1A11 ECOG trial, are really comparing a triplet to a doublet, and soon you will have trials comparing a quadruplet to a triplet, in which case you're really having to make cross-trial comparisons which are not really optimal. So how do we adjudicate? Is it based on the number of randomized controlled trials? Is it based on the hazard ratio? Is it based on the absolute length of the progression-free survival? Can you really compare the progression-free survival of the SWOG trial to the Maya trial? Do you take into account cost or convenience or endpoint? When you don't have head-to-heads comparing the standard of cares, we're making all kinds of extrapolations. And the last thing you want is to decide based on the how wonderful the speaker is. Like if the speaker is very persuasive, would you choose that regimen? So I think we need to really define, design trials very much like what the E1A11 is doing, compare the triplets head to head and then make a decision. So right now, here's my algorithm for off-study therapy for transplant ineligible patients, taking all of these trials into account. The only trial that stands up to scrutiny for changing the standard of care would be the Maya trial. And so either VRD, or DRD would be my standard of care for transplant ineligible patients. I still favor VRD because it is cheaper. We know a lot more about VRD in terms of long-term safety. It allows you to give a triplet only for nine months followed by a monotherapy. And so this is kind of my preference, but I think DRD has sub substantial data. And if cost was not a concern, then that would be a reasonable option as well. There are some patients who are frail for whom a doublet might be reasonable. There are some special circumstances. For example, in many countries, lenalidomide is still not available as frontline therapy. So you may have to use VTD instead. There are patients with acute renal failure for whom lenalidomide cannot be dosed accurately at the very first time you see them because their creatinine is eight. And so you may have to use Cybor-D or even dara cybor -D for treating them. There are patients with plasma cell leukemia, extramedullary disease, high-risk multiple myeloma, where you question is, should we be considering quadruplets in those patients? And then finally, there are patients who would like to get a triplet but cannot get a triplet because they simply cannot travel. Maybe they live in Rochester, Minnesota, and it's difficult to park and so in the winter. So, <coughs> so you may have to use an oral regimen, and again, you may have to think about IRD, but uh, I, I personally would wait for the randomized trial to come out. I will close with this. Generally, we, we, we have a lot of regimens, a lot of drugs to treat newly diagnosed myeloma, and if you think things are complex, they're going to get even more complex because we are having an explosion in the number of new drugs. There are three of them here, car -T's, the GSK antibody and Amgen 420701, they're all highly active, all likely to be approved, and all probably will vie to get into the frontline space. Not to mention other drugs, including isatuximab and CC220 and Benitoclax. So we have to just keep our compass straight in terms of what does it take to change the standard of care. You want to wait for the randomized control trial. You don't want to be swayed by surrogate endpoints or phase two data on just response rate or MRD negative rate. 
Finally, I would rather everybody not treat patients according to the algorithms that I just mentioned, but put patients on clinical trials, because it's only through clinical trials that we have made progress. <coughs> and for newly diagnosed patients, Dr. Kumar is going to lead a trial, which I hope will open next year in all over the US in the cooperative groups. It's already been approved by NCI steering committee to move forward. It will basically use a triplet for nine months and then ask the question, who benefits the most from adding the fourth drug? So it will give a triplet for nine months and then randomize patients to getting a, a quadruplet versus a triplet and then look at the results by MRD rate. So I will close with this and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you again for your attention and, and the award. Thank you. <laughs>